If I could have your attention, please, we are going to start the meeting. My name is Jerry Vanessa, I'm a member of the school committee and the secondary school building committee. And I'd like to welcome all of you here tonight on behalf of the secondary school building committee. Purpose of tonight's meeting is to update you on the status of the high school and middle school building project and also discuss with you the cost overruns that we are currently experiencing. Yeah. Joining me tonight in the presentation are Superintendent of Schools, Kathleen Willis, to my right. She's a member of the uh, Secretary of School Building Committee as well. Sean Delaney, the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, who is also a member of the Secretary of School Building Committee. And Don Kelleher, a member of the Finance Committee, also a member of the Secondary School Building Committee. We have a presentation for you that's only going to take about 20 to 25 minutes, and I think it's posted up there. Yeah. We're going to do a status review of the project. We're going to talk about the budget that was approved just about a year ago, last March. We'll talk to you about how we got here, how we tried to respond uh, to the budget overruns. We're going to give you an updated cost estimate, which will include a range of costs, additional costs. We're going to talk to you about the consequences of a yes or a no vote. We're going to deal with the next steps that we're going to be taking. And then we're going to open it up for public comment and discussion. We also have here tonight representatives of uh, our architect, Doran Whittier, Doran and also from PMA uh, Associates, which is our project manager, and Jeff Whitt is here as well, and Chris Cap. Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Sean Delaney. Thank you, Gary. Good evening, Begin with a status review. Today, the building committee has committed $40 million to this project, of which $9 million has been expended to date. Contracts have been issued for site work, stale, and concrete. If you've been to the area, you've noticed the site work has commenced. Foundations are being installed. The steel is expected to arrive the third and fourth week of the month of March. The steel will be erected soon thereafter. So exciting things are happening on site on a daily basis. Additional requests for bids have been issued. Those are expected in this date is March 28. Those are items such as masonry, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, and roofing. As I stated earlier, construction is underway. In this photograph you see here. Photograph is taken essentially from the roof of the current middle school. And what you're looking at is the foundation of the soon to be new high school. This photograph is taken from the position of you were standing in the foundation of the new high school. The dump truck that you see there is removing soil, and that is in the area where the new auditorium will be located. This third photograph shows the wall that will be between will complete the media center and what you've heard previously be described as Main Street. Main Street will separate New High School from the completely renovated middle school. This particular photograph shows a corner, the far corner that that far corner is the corner of the high school foundation, which will be closest to the Ryan School, to give you a perspective. And that beyond there, the, what you see in the distance is actually the high school, the roof of this particular high school. This photograph is taken from the perspective of what will be the new roadway of the Joint Middle School High School. The trucks you see up in the left hand corner, they're actually pouring the foundation. The right corner of that photograph, where you see construction vehicles, to give you a visual perspective. That would be the area of the far right-hand corner 
of the new gymnasium. Now turning to what was approved last night. <coughs> last night we had a special town meeting on March 19 for a special election on March 24, as I'm sure you all recall. At that time, what was approved was a project budget of $107.7 million. It was made up of two components. $21.2 million was for professional services, contingencies, furniture, fixtures, equipment, technology. $86.5 million was the then construction cost estimate. That construction cost estimate was based upon 20% design documents. That is different than what we will receive from Gilbane who is the CM at risk. CM, Gilbane will provide to us, on or before March 11th, a guarantee maximum price. That's a guarantee maximum price that Gilbane will buy this job at. And don't be criticized for what I had said about a year ago about not coming back and asking for more money. I must say that I did say that, I acknowledge that. And that was based upon advice and opinions that were given to us by project manager. This is different than the estimate that was provided back a year ago. Guaranteed maximum price, as I said earlier, is what you'll be able to buy this job at. And we will have that on March 11th. And we will present it, and you'll hear it at a joint meeting of the School Committee and Board of Selectmen on that evening at Town Hall. That will begin at 6 p.m. And then we will have, following that, on March 14th will be our third informational session prior to the night of special town meeting on March 18th and the special, special election on March 27th. How did we get here? <coughs> they just stated but it's obvious now that the estimate was too low. Too. Has been a change in market conditions. What our architect project manager has they have seen in other jobs in the market and in the industry that construction cost prices and bids are much higher now than they were a year ago. And there were some site challenges on this particular project around the little soils that were found in the area of the foundation area in the high school. There was DEP issues that were encountered. There was a wetlands issue that was located after the town election last year. What I can tell you also is that people are asking us to point fingers and point blank. As of two weeks ago, the Board of Selectmen has taken on the responsibility of doing the due diligence for this town and protecting any and all interests the town may have in the regards to, one, further negotiations and conversations with both the architect, Laura Whittier, the PMA, the project manager, and seeking contribution from both to try to help us close this gap. In addition there, too, the Board of Selectmen as of two weeks ago, is seeking legal opinion as to the viability of any and all claims that the town may have against either one or both. The Board of Selectmen chose to take this responsibility on in order for the Secretary of School Building Committee to be able to continue working on a daily basis with both Dora Whitty and PMA, because they are the architect and project manager that will remain in this job. Our response to the issue that first developed and we first became aware of in terms of the estimate being too low was developed and came to our attention at the end of last summer, the beginning of the last fall. We undertook what is called value management. Value management is a process by which the Secretary of School Building Committee reviewed and revised the design and the materials to reduce costs. Secondary School Building Committee removed the 
changed items to try to get cost estimate down to what the approved budget was. Secondary School Building Committee, and I stress this, did not add any item to either the new high school or the middle school, unlike what has been done in other communities. It has, on the items that we reviewed, revised, or removed, there has been no impact on the edu educational programming or the square footage of the joint middle school and high school. If we had impacted either one or both of those areas, it would have had issues for the MSBA. Secondary School Building Committee has followed the process that MSBA has set forward from day one in terms of the formation and the members of the Secondary School Building Committee. MSBA dictates who and what capacity members of this committee have to represent. That being superintendents, schools, school administrators, members of finance committee, school committee, board of selectors. It's all dictated by MSBA. That was followed to a T. In addition there to every step along the way that the MSBA set out has been followed by this committee. There's been no deviation. Secondary School Building Committee, not the U.S. House of Patent and Back, but has spent hundreds of hours in terms of reviewing, revising the design, accepting and rejecting items to be removed from the project in order to get the approved budget. It was a painstaking task, but unfortunately, although the items that we have in the third columns are unacceptable to all of us, and none of us wish to be in this position, what you'll see later is much more draconian if, in fact, this additional request for money is defeated either at the special town meeting or at the special arch. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Superintendent Willis to go through the items that we have put into our deferred column and also speak to other items that are in the Thank you, Mr. Delaney. As Mr. Delaney just indicated to you, to arrive at this initial list, hundreds of hours have been spent reviewing site, structural, architectural, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing items presented to the Secondary School Building Committee by our professionals. These items are not random, nor are they intended as scare tactics. The items reviewed were identified as those that could be deferred because they had the least impact on the construction schedule. They can still be added back into the project with additional funding because they are not embedded in the construction. These items were also identified because they do not directly affect the education program or square footage of the building project. All of these items are currently included in the current construction documents, and the value of these items will be included in the final guaranteed maximum price. So at this time, I'm going to review the previously eliminated items to meet the project budget, to provide more context to each. I'll move through these at this particular time. So when we talk about the athletic field team room building, it's important for you to know that this includes bathrooms for students to use during physical education class, <coughs> team practices, and games. It provides spaces for equipment storage, and this storage extends the life of the equipment, thus protecting the investment that the town has already made. It provides girls' and boys' team rooms for interscholastic sports. Audiovisual equipment includes projection screens, televisions, TV stands. Reductions to auditorium lighting and stage equipment means we will have limited functionality of this space. The basketball hoop motors raise and lower basketball hoops. This will need to be done manually. There will be an indirect cost to those members of the community that choose to use this facility 
because there will be an increase in labor costs to um, manually hire and lower these basketball hoops. The district office. In North Reading, the superintendent's office has been on campus for the last several decades. It's currently on site, but the administrators and support personnel are spread out across the middle school. We need to streamline the operation and maximize the resources available by bringing everyone together in one space. It's important for the executive office to be close to operations. There is an ease of leadership that flows naturally when the office is on site. Those of us that are administrators in that space are able to engage easily with faculty, with staff, with students, and with parents. When central office is on site, it is, it is perceived to be directly connected to the educational program rather than a business office located someplace else in town. And finally, we're facing the rent versus own dilemma. The district will need to rent 4,000 square feet. This will be a reoccurring annual cost to the budget that may increase over time as rents typically do. This current capital expense will move to the operating budget and, by doing so, will shift funds from educational programs to paying rent. The gym divider curtain is the curtain that divides the gymnasium into se separate instructional spaces and allows multiple classes of middle school and high school physical education classes to take place simultaneously. Plantings. The original estimate for plantings was about $500,000. The reduction reflects a balance of $20,000, essentially eliminating all landscaping on site. Rubber fitness flooring is the flooring that will be in one of the two auxiliary gyms, and this gym is identified for fitness and weight training. So what will result is a concrete floor. The rubber stair treads line the stairs to prevent slipping. There will be no home tennis courts. The school district operations budget will include an annual rental fee. As a result of this also, there will be no summer community availability. The traffic light location is at the main entrance to the middle school high school on Route 62. The inclusion of this item is supported by traffic studies conducted during the design phase as well as by our public safety officials. The elimination of vinyl tile flooring throughout the entire project will result in exposed plain concrete like what you have in your basement or your garage floor. It is not painted or polished like what we currently have in our middle school. This next slide lists some of those items that I think are self-explanatory. The colored concrete is at the front entrance of the school. It will now be gray. Concrete seat walls surround plantings at the front of the schools. Granite curbing would be along the walkways. Marker and tack boards are also known as whiteboards and bulletin boards. And unit pavers are at the front of the building in the courtyard area. So that was a review of the previously eliminated items to meet the approved budget. Based on the most recent cost estimates, it became clear that we needed to cut significantly more items from the approved project budget. These newly identified items under consideration are as follows. Eliminate the brick building facade. That means that the brick would be replaced with concrete block for both buildings. Eliminate fixed auditorium seating. That means we'll be using freestanding chairs in the auditorium. Eliminate sports fields. The high school will be demolished and foundations filled and seated. We'd be eliminating the gymnasium bleachers. There would be some standing room and room available for freestanding chairs again. Eliminate cooling in the schools. There would be no cooling in those areas that have been designed to be cooled. Eliminate window coverings. There would be no window shades in classrooms or offices. Eliminate paving top coat for parking and driveway areas. This would result in um, parking and driveway areas being left with a two inch paved binder coat only, similar to what we currently have at the front of the middle school, front parking and driveway. We acknowledge how ridiculous 
some of the approved and proposed cuts are to what the secondary school building committee and any reasonable person would think is a properly complete school, even though they do not directly affect educational programming. The middle school, high school building design strictly followed MSBA guidelines, thus contained no frills. This was no Taj Mahal. To remove essential items from this project has been excruciating. The identification of these new items are not intended to be scare tactics. They are not the lowest priority items, but ones that could be deferred to the end of the building schedule to avoid construction delays as much as possible. By no means is this list exhaustive, but it is so important for the community to understand how extensive the reductions will be without additional funding. Without these items, the result will be a very different school than the one voted by the community. At this time, I am going to ask Finance Committee Member Mr. Don Kelleher to now explain to you the daily cost estimate. Uh, I'm going to go over the updated costs that we uh, just received uh, two days ago. Uh, the estimators for Gildane, the construction manager, and Norm Whittier, our architects, uh, have developed uh, cost estimates based upon the 90% construction documents. These estimates are, as I say, quite current. They're based on their estimates on what's happening in the marketplace today for school projects that are being bid so that we have a, a, a very current uh, cost estimate built, built into these. The range of additional costs to complete the project as originally designed is 13 to $16 million. Large number. Uh, we wish it could be smaller, obviously, but uh, as, as Ms. Delaney mentioned in, in, the, in his presentation, you know, the drivers of this are the, the estimate, the early estimate, uh, some site work issues, and as, as I just mentioned, the cost estimates. Cost estimates are higher uh, than, than they were. I think if you look around and read the paper to see what's going on in the Great Boston area, there's an awful lot of construction going on. That in itself is going, going to drive up prices because you're you're competing with, with lots of other buildings, not just school buildings. Um, it's important that these additional costs be, be funded within the project uh, by means of, of exempt debt as the original authorization was. And the reason for that is the title of, by some of the other speakers already, but these things, many of them, simply have to be done to deliver a school that we're all going to be proud of. If they're not covered in the project budget, uh, we're going to have to be looking to cover them in, out of the operating budgets of, of the school or of the other debt that would then have to be, be funded uh, out of operating costs. So no matter how we look at it, whether it's, it's debt or just, just trading off, uh, there's going to be increased pressure on the operating budgets, not just for the school, but the town as, uh, as well for municipal services. So the most efficient way of dealing with this is to include it into an exempt bond item that's outside of the, uh, the operating budget and it will be paid off over, over the, uh, the length of the, of the bond and then go away. Uh, the estimators will be uh, reconciling the differences uh, that they have between their, their, their two estimates, uh, and we will receive a guaranteed maximum price, the GMP, on <coughs> March 11th. As Mr. Delaney said, that the, the estimate that we had a year ago when this project was, was brought forward uh, to the voters was our best estimate of what it was going to cost to do it based upon the, the advice of our, our, our professionals. Uh, though that was off of 20% design documents. The difference between then and now is that the estimate of the, the price that we received on March 11th is no longer an estimate, it's going to be the cost of the 
construct the building. Uh, the contractor at risk the building uh, will be, uh, uh, term is buying, buying the project, they'll be, they'll be responsible for delivering the construction of the project at that price, and they'll guarantee that price. A lot different than, than we were a year ago. Uh, you know, people have, have I've heard, and, and it's probably uh, folks in the room here say, well, how do we know this is the last time we're going to be coming back to us? Uh, this is because we'll have a guaranteed price. Uh, the, the estimated tax impact, as I mentioned, the cost increase is going to be from 13 to $16 million. We'll know what that number is on, on March 11th, and we'll present it at, 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 the, at March 11th, the selectmen and the school committee and the Secondary School Building Committee will present it at that meeting. It will also be presented at the next community forum on uh, March 14th. Uh, the impact of that 13 to 16 million dollars to use the average value of a home in North Berlin, which is about 450 million, about 450 thousand dollars, dealing in millions too much, 450 thousand dollars. The range from the, for the 13 to 16 million dollars is 155 to 190 dollars a year. Translate that into something that you can afford <coughs> your own uh, your own situation. That's 34 to 42 dollars per hundred thousand dollars of assessed value. So if you look at your your current tax bill and see what your assessed value is to determine what the cost will be to you based upon this range. It will be, as I said, $34 to $42 per $100,000 of assessed value. I'm going to turn this back to Mr. Lanazio, and uh, that will take a Thank you. Again, the consequences. A year's vote to approve the additional funding is absolutely critical to this project. I don't know what else to say. It, it's critical because it keeps the project on schedule. It's critical because it supports the restoration of all the items that Superintendent Willis went over that are going to be taken out of this project and will be restored back into the project if we get this funding. All of them will be. It will allow us to complete the project as we envisioned it, as we proposed it, as we designed it. It maintains the full MSBA reimbursement amount. That means that the 47 to $49 million that the MSBA is contributing to this project stays in place. It's the most cost-effective way to complete the school project as designed. And it doesn't have an impact on future um, operational budgets. That's why a year's vote is so important on this. We have a problem. We need to fix it. The time to fix it is right now. A no vote has dire consequences for this project. No vote results in all of those items that Superintendent Rose talked about and more being removed from the project. It results in potentially a seven month delay in the project at a cost of possibly $400,000 a month. And anybody that's involved in construction knows that any delay in a project has a cost associated with it. And it obviously fails to meet the original project, project mission uh, and, and allow us to complete the project as we designed it. If you look at this graph, the top two boxes, you can see it, or if you look at your handout, it shows the schedule that we currently have, and it's the top two boxes. The high school construction is to be completed in the summer of 2014. That allows us to get into the middle school and stop work on the middle school during the summer of 2014. And the projected completion of the middle school would be in the summer of 2015. If we encounter any significant delays, it backs up everything. And this, the consequences are that the high school construction would not be completed until sometime in November, December of 2014. That means we can't stop the middle school construction until we complete the high school because the students in the middle school are going to move into the old high school and the students in the old high school are going to move into the new, uh, the new high school. That means the phasing is going to have to take place in the middle of school year as opposed to in the summer. It's no accident the schedule reads this way because that was the plan from the beginning, to be able to move all the students and all everything we need and 
now acclimate the staff during the summer of 2014 and 2015. In addition to that, the cost of delaying the project for six to seven months is approximately $3 million. And that $3 million is additional monies that are going to be taken away from the project, which means we have to find additional cuts to make up for the $3 million that the delay will cost us. The Secondary School Building Committee certainly never wanted to be here in front of you asking for additional funding as Mr. Delaney stated. It's the last thing we wanted to do. We worked, we thought back in late summer and in the fall of last year that we could fix the project, that we could take out some things that weren't going to have a huge impact and that we would not have to come back for additional funds. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So we are strongly recommending that you approve the funding so that we can complete this project as it was designed. Next steps, as Mr. Delaney and Mr. Kelleher have stated, uh, we are going to get a guaranteed maximum price on March 11th. That means that we will have the number. It won't be a range anymore, it won't be an estimate anymore, it will be the number that our contractor, Gilbane, is going to buy the project for. We're going to have another informational forum on Thursday, March 14th, and at that forum, obviously, uh, we will be able to provide everybody with that number. As Mr. Delaney said, we're also going to be meeting as a joint board of selectmen and schools committee uh, to announce that number. We have the board of selectmen have scheduled a special town meeting for Monday, March 18th, and then a special town election for Friday, March 22nd. Obviously, both of them, the meeting and the election is to ask the community to approve the additional funding. At this time, I'd like to open it up for public comment or questions, and we'll be glad to answer every question or take input from the public. Um, Steve Bacon has a microphone. I'm going to ask you because it is being televised. Please use the microphone. Just raise your hand, and Steve will come to you. Yes, sir. Just a, a couple of points. Name and address, please. Owen Mouche, I live in uh, Bob Road. Uh, could, is there any clarification regarding if there is money to recoup from either the project manager or the architect firm? How does that play into, number one, when would it be recouped? Number two, how would it affect projects? That, that's an odd, I mean, that's an ongoing process right now to kind of deal with that. And as uh, Mr. Delaney said, the Board of Selectmen are doing dealing with that directly with the project manager and the architect, uh, the school building committee's not. Um, I, I'm assuming, again, if there were monies or contributions, they would be applied to the project um, to go towards the project. And I want, to, I want to assure you that if there are monies left over at the conclusion of this project, in this budget, that money would go back to the town. It would be reduced the debt service, though, the money we're going to have to borrow. <coughs> And, and, they, and did, did we consult our, our legal counsel regarding continuing working with these, this architect and this project manager? It seems like, and again, it's not out there, because a lot of it's an executive session. There seems to be some liability here. Are, are, are we okay as a town working with this group? Yeah, I, I don't want to comment on, on legal issues. We have met with uh, town council, both the secondary school building committee has met with town council, and I know the selectmen have consulted with town council. Uh, I want to say this. Uh, we are confident in moving forward with our architect, our project manager, and our contractor. They are experienced. They have done multiple jobs in the past. Uh, and we've been working with them for a very long time. And it would be fatal to this project for us to have to make a change with our architect or our project manager. Uh, there was a bad estimate. We, the estimate was too long. There have been a lot of things that have happened over the last year. From the time we gave that estimate in March of 2012, until now, March of 2013, there have been a lot of things that have come about, particularly the, the uh, change in the marketplace that have resulted in the increased cost. But to answer your question, we are moving forward with all of our professionals. We have consulted legal counsel. We have. Profession, and they have advised that. We have, we have consulted legal counsel, and they have advised that. Okay. So basically, we're not, the, the, any money that would be coming back to the town, we wouldn't be decided before this next vote, right? It would no, be absolutely not. Absolutely not. But it is an ongoing process, but, but it would not certainly be decided before the next vote.
Yeah, John Percio, 31 Marshall Street. I have two questions that confuse me a little bit on this presentation. What I thought I heard when I was here at the first presentation was that if the initial funding wasn't approved, the project would still go on, but we had a list of things that would have to come out of the project for us to meet the budget. What I heard tonight was, I thought I heard tonight, maybe I heard more, was not only would those things have to come out, but there's another list of things that would also have to come out as well. And I'm curious how that changed between what I thought I heard before and what I heard now. And then the second part was, I also thought I heard a couple of times say that none of those things would affect the square foot of the building. And I also heard if we move the division offices out, we've got to go rent 4,000 square feet or whatever the number was elsewhere. So what happens to that 4,000 square feet in the building if it doesn't go down and the division office moves out? The, the, the removal of things from the building, if I can phrase it that way, but taking out of things from the building has been an ongoing process going all the way back to last September. The reason things have changed is we've had to add to it. As we completed our construction documents, it went from 60% to 90% completion of the construction documents. We were able, at this point in time, to get the range that you saw tonight. So this is the first time that we've seen that range of 13 to $16 million. Before, we were working on, hopefully, a lower number. And we were also in the process of seeing how far we could go in removing things from the project that did not impact the square footage and or the uh, educational needs of the school. So we've had to continue to add and with this number, it just keeps, we just keep adding to the list. Um, I'm sorry, the second part of your question? The square foot change with the divisional office. If I could just add, Jerry would just answer the first question. We went from a 60% construction documents to 90% construction documents. So that contributed to first <coughs> design of both buildings <coughs> to the cost. In terms of the second question, that square footage is not an educational space, so we don't think it will have that impact in terms of MSB age. We don't think, we don't know. It's not reimbursable by the MSB age. The administrative um, square footage was never reimbursable, it's still not, so therefore it doesn't affect. Yeah, those are right, there's things like the, uh, the administrative offices and the, the team rooms that are not uh, reimbursable by MSBA. Those are paid totally by the owner of the project, which is us. But they were included in that original plan. I'm Christine Badoris, and I live on North Ridge Drive. Um, I'm a little new to this process, but um, I guess I could you say the first estimate was a bad estimate. I'm still confused as to why the estimates changed. The estimate that we had for the cost of the project a year ago in March was based on 20% design documents, a schematic design. I don't understand that. That means that the project is in the early stages of being designed, being developed. And the schematic design doesn't have all of the detail that's required for a contractor to actually get a price on the cost of the project. So what we do with the estimate that we had, we rely on a project manager, our architect, to come up with uh, a projected cost. And that cost is based a lot of times on the square footage of the project. Since that time, the documents have progressed to the point where we have 90% design and construction documents done. So the contractor can look at the detail on those documents, and at that point, starts to price out things exactly. What about the next 10%? The next 10%, if, if we move forward now and get the funding, we can lock in the price of the, of the buildings on the 90% documents, and the contractor then will absorb whatever risk there is between the 90 and 100%. That's all going to be built in to the number that we come up with on March 11th. Now that our taxes gone up since the project has started. I'm sorry. Have the taxes, how much of the taxes gone up since this has started? The tax rate in fiscal 12 was $14.38. It went up to sixteen oh four in fiscal 13. You've got to break that into two pieces. Uh, 34 cents of that was just general government, which would be normally what we would see. That was about, the total increase is about a little over 11 and a half percent. The 34 cents was represented uh, about 2.4 percent. 
that would be in line with the two and a half percent increase that you would, you would not be seeing in, 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 in the project. The balance of it, of the dollar thirty-two per thousand, was the uh, the cost of the school, which is in line with what we thought it was going to be. For example, if you took that that four hundred fifty thousand dollar home. We, we made our projections last year. We said that the, the cost would be about $700 for a $450,000 home. The cost that you saw in the tax bill this year for a $450,000 home was less than that. It was about $595. The reason is when we built our tax projection, we took it at, at borrowing the full $60 million that was offered. We haven't borrowed it all yet. We've borrowed 50 of the $60 million. So if you do the math on that $595, probably, I've probably lost everybody, but if you do the math on that to convert it to, to the full borrowing, it would have been about $713. So it was pretty much in line with what we said. So the, there, there were no surprises in the amount of the, the tax increases, what we thought it would be. This override, the estimate would add either $34 to $42 per $100,000 of valuation. So for that, again, that, that $450,000 home, it would, would add $155 to $190 per year. And already happened this past year? Pardon? No, no, that hasn't happened at all. That would be if this, if this vote passes, we go ahead and uh, fund this project. When that money is spent, which is going to be down the road, then that would add the, the, the $155, dollars per year to the tax bill for an average home. So this project is going to add about 2 to 3% to the average tax rate? Well, that, it, it's going to add a um, drop of 10% to the tax rate when all is said and done. Hi, my name is Dan Lopez, I live at the Hazel Street. Um, I've heard a lot of talk about the estimate, and I guess I have less of a question and more of a concern. And, and I, so I've heard you say you have a lot of confidence in the architect and the project manager, and I guess I can say as a resident of this town, I do not. It was a little over a year ago that I sat in the same auditorium, and the architect and the um, project manager were here, and I asked a question about the estimate. And I have a particular interest in it because I actually run the Department of Professional Estimators. And I heard that at the time that you were telling us you had a plus or minus 10% estimate of less than 25% of the design was complete. My statement then was that I thought that that was a reckless statement and that it was an industry standard. That it was kind of impossible to have a plus or minus 10% estimate with that little engineering and design completed. And so I know you stand here now and we say, look, well, we got ourselves into it. And you want to continue to do work with these same people that stood at that podium and told these town people that the estimate was plus or minus 10%. I think that's, I think people need to be held accountable for that. Uh, I <laughs>
representative from PMA that's on site, he's running the job. That's one change. Gives us greater confidence uh, in PMA. Uh, the additional thing that has occurred since that time, CM at risk has been brought on board with PMA. And that's, that's our safeguards. As we said, we get a guaranteed match for price. We know what that means. Right? There's two estimators on the job, one for your name and one for Dora Wood, the architect. Uh, and as I stated earlier, Board of Selectmen doing the due diligence, seeking legal opinion. And those avenues will be pursued if we are given the opinion that there's a viable claim against either one of both Dora Wood or PMA. The other issue, if we had changed either architect or project manager at this stage, all it would have done would have delayed the project, would have added to the increased cost. Because I'm sure if you're in the business that you're in, you understand that you change an architect at this point, a new architect isn't going to come in and pick up the environments. And a new project manager isn't going to pick up and run from where the current project manager is. So those were considered, but the cost of delay in that aspect was too great. But we have the added confidence we can change the representative of the PMA and actually having the CM and person on board at this point in time, which is not in place. And is never in place in any school project at the time that the vote was approved a year ago. Hi there, this is uh, Andy Lowe from Lamar Road. Uh, a couple questions. One, I'm actually traveling during the town election, so how do I actually vote? And my other one was, uh, Talked a little bit about the new items being pulled out, that we're not trying to scare anybody by using scare tactics. It seems a little aggressive to say we're not going to have air conditioning, so I'd like to address that. And also, I don't understand, since we talked about these changes won't affect the building, how can the building then be delayed by seven months, costing $3 million? It's just not making sense to me. And as to your first question, how are you voting on this? <laughs> um, seriously, um, you can go to the town hall and get an absolute ballot. They're, they're available, I think, this coming week, they'll be available to you. Um, the second question was about some of the things that are being taken out of the project. Like, air, you said no scare tactics, but they want to air conditioning. It sounds like a scare tactic. It, it's not. i got to tell you, when we started the, as Sean explained, the, the value management of this thing, we were trying to pull out things that were designed oriented that weren't going to really impact the building at all. That would be nice to have, but we don't have to have. So we pull those things out. And then we went to the next list and, and, and we just kept going after things. And the amount of money that we need to complete this project, we had to go after some items that were big, big cost items. Things that we could take out, but we could still move forward with the project. And that's where we find ourselves. It's, it, it, we, we went through this project with a microscope. We just try to find things that would reduce the cost of the project. And it got to a point where we were compromising the project, and it, we had to come back to the community. We had to come back and ask you, you know, what do we do? What is your preference? We don't want to take those things out. It's killing us. Because the, the way this building was designed, it was a, an efficient uh, school the way it was designed, both the middle school and the high school. And to take these things out, it hurts. But we had no choice in one of these items. I think your last aspect was, well, how we're not affecting the buildings. How does that tie into the delay? Well, delay, what happens is once we remove all these other items, what has to happen, the bidding process on those various items has to start in bidding. Right. And as Jerry said, there's redesign of all, secondary bidding process that takes place. And then what happens, you're going to have various trades that end up what they call stacking. So instead of having one trade in the building and working with completing and pulling in a second trade at that point, they're going to be working on top of it. Less efficient, more time involved, contributes to the delay. But as Jerry said, in terms of the delay, you saw it. If the completion of a high school doesn't take place in time for the move in the summer of 2014, the earliest it's going to be able to move is probably around Thanksgiving. You can't move. Middle school students down here, probably um, Christmas break. So that six or seven months you have in the summer of 14 to January 15, vision delay time period. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, if we can't get into the middle school until November, we could. Our plan is to be in there when the kids leave in June of 2014. 
2014. It's not working right away, June, July, August, September, October, November. And if the phasing's delayed, then we can't get in there. Proceed. Okay. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is John Postman. Um, I live at uh, three Southern Heights. Um, I have three uh, questions about this uh, project. I should just say that um, I do support the project. Um, and initially, uh, I also supported it. Um, I have a question about the initial planning, the rising costs in the future. So, to begin with um, the initial planning, my understanding was there were two estimates given one from the architect that was 342 per square foot, the second one was given by the end of the 322 dollars per square foot. Why couldn't you have just taken the 342 square foot per square foot and just said, look, cost overruns happen, let's just take it, let's be very, very conservative. Um, the, um, uh, the second second question I had was the rising costs. So I did a bit of research and I found that um, in the literature, in terms of rising, in, in, in terms of the cost going up in projects, it's very, very common. And depending on the nature of the project, the average rising cost is between 25 and 50 percent. And um, given that's the case, I am just wondering what prevented you from just building in a massive contingency and to say, look, the municipal projects go, go over budget, but let's put in um, uh, a massive contingency. And specifically in terms of the economy, um, I also looked at uh, articles going in 2011 and 2012, and there were the housing market was starting to tighten. Um, and corporate profits are rising, and corporate profits are indicative of the cost of materials, not people's personal income, even though they were suffering at that point. Um, and I found numerous analysts who were saying, hey, because the steel is going up, because the oil is going up, all of these things are going up. A third question, so again, like, I don't understand why it wasn't foreseeable that costs were going to go up. In fact, the 2008, 9, 10 recession was an exception. So again, I didn't understand why you say, look, this is a very, very rare time in history. Costs are very, very low, but let's, let's assume that we're going to go back to normal. And I don't understand why the committee was so optimistic. The third question I had is the future. So, you said that you need up to 16 million. What if it's 20? What if it's 25? And what if something else goes wrong? So you said that, 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 that the construction company is going to take responsibility for this project. But what if they don't? What if you get into a legal dispute with them? What if something else happens? Like the last, the last time you came before us, you said this is this is it. This is the final amount of money. There won't be any more. But things always happen that are out of that just out of. It's completely out of the expected. You'd be like, oh, I'm sure, and then boom, something else happens. What kind of guarantee can you give us? And who can be held responsible if, again, you have to come back to us for more money or if there are, again, more problems? Again, I'm going to go back to the same, the same response. I understand what you're saying, but the estimate that we received a year ago, we were comfortable as a committee on the recommendation of our budget manager that that was a good estimate and that that did take into consideration inflation, the marketplace changing, and all those things. But again, the, the Apparently, you've got two estimates that go one for 322 and one for 342. Why not just go with the architect and just say, look, the higher estimate is those in the two. One second, can you imagine a team construction project where it comes in on the budget? That just doesn't happen. Those two estimates were taken by the project manager as part of the overall process of trying to come up with a price. They evaluated those estimates and they came to us with a cost of $107.8 million. That's the number that we relied on in good faith. Now, again, that, the, the basis for them getting to that number was to take a look at the scope of the project, the square footage, and come back to the number that we relied on. As far as presently and going forward, the reason we call it a guaranteed maximum price is that the contractor is going to give us the cost of this project on March 11th. That is the cost. We have adequate, more than adequate contingencies built into that number to handle any unforeseen things that might come along. And most of our concerns were really with the site which is being developed 
and we don't anticipate any further problems with the site. There are, there's plenty of contingency in there. The guaranteed maximum price means that. That's the price that they're going to buy the project for. It's the difference between having an estimate based on 20% design documents, essentially a schematic design, and having 100% or 90% construction documents with all the detail that's going to be required for our contractor to price this job. So again, we are comfortable with the guaranteed maximum price when we get it. And it's going to be somewhere in that range that we gave you tonight. Because we took the number that was recommended to us by the professionals that we retained. I mean, you had to the no, we didn't have two numbers. We had one number. The number that was came to us.
we're pursuing the investigation of Vietnam. I'd like to tell you I'm wrong. I'd like to get that I'm wrong. That, that, that there's no liability that we're not working with people who did who will be paid to do a job who didn't do a good job. I'm not hearing that. I think it would have been reckless for us to have stopped the project. In the best interest of the community, although it was considered by the building best interest of the community is in a school project, the decision was made to move forward, and that was the best and correct decision to make. Sure, I just, it's Mel Webster with the uh, chairman of the school committee. I just want to make sure everybody understands the process. The MSBA dictates that the estimate that you get is based on 20% design documents. We, we didn't ask for it. We didn't say, oh, let's estimate this project on 20% documents. That's the MSBA process. So, so we got a design, 20% design. We got, and I want to correct something here. The SSBC, nor the school committee, nor the selectmen, ever saw two estimates. We saw one estimate, which was the estimate we got from PMC. PMA, PMA and Gordon Lidier had two estimators. They met, and then they came back to us, and they said, this is the estimate for the project. And now, I want to add one other thing, so that when we came up with the estimate of the cost of this project, all of that had to go before the MSBA for approval. So everything we did goes before the committee. It goes to one of their representatives. They review the documents that they have available. They review the cost. They review the estimate. And then they either approve it or disapprove it. The MSBA approved the project as it was designed and at the cost that we projected it at. <coughs> Somebody behind you, Steve. I'm watching in time for the butter on Sherman Road. And I guess my question is, uh, back to those, the tree. I mean, how did that happen? And that was an overcost. I mean, we couldn't have budgeted the budget. It took me through this whole Dr. Pony show. The only these trees were going to be cut. And then you cut them all. So that had to have added to the cost. So how does that work? Again, who approves that? And if you're saying that it's the site manager, do we now believe him again that he's going to be able to finish this project? No, those plans that indicated the tree cutting were submitted to the Community Planning Commission. The additional trees were cut because we needed to store some materials in that place. It's part of the construction site. But that's not what you told me. When I was at that meeting, you told me, you walked me through, you marked the trees, so you lied to me? No, again, it was an additional plan that was submitted for the purpose of cutting additional trees. And you didn't think that was important to let the abutters know, especially where my property is. I am I'm listening to the vibrations daily. It vibrates my house. That you've took, You took all my shade. But that wasn't important enough to let me know? Well, I think the side of your house is still a uh, border. There's one or two. Border. And, and again, it's a part of the we, path we, out. We've been trying to address that. We formed an abutters committee to deal with the abutters subsequent to the trees being cut down. But all those but trees once they're down. gone, they're gone. On the property. And to store materials? I, I think that was a foolish mistake. And I'm wondering who's responsible for that. Please clarify something. The additional trees were not taken down to store materials. The additional trees were taken down in the effort to get this cost this project back in line. The, the decision. No, ma'am. Cost more to take you the same amount of time to take down the trees that you showed me and then to clear the land that was the same price. That I will I will I will explain to you. I have a follow-up question. By taking down the additional trees, it gave us space in which to keep soil on site. The, the net cost savings when you factor in the additional tree removal and keeping with its 50,000 cubic yards of soil on site, the savings was $400,000. The net savings on this project was $400,000 by doing that. So it wasn't just a store 
dirt. There was a plan behind it. There was one of several, many, hundreds of items that the building committee looked at in order to get this project, the attempt to get this project back in line, the original plan. So it was off budget that early. That, that, that early? That early into the project, it was off budget? Is that what you're telling me? I'm going over the answer. In the summer of last year, we first became aware of the initial overage in cost. The committee worked for two to three months. They were able to take items out of the project that no one even know the difference, essentially. No one minimize by saying cosmetic, but sake of this conversation, there were items taken out and we were able to work to get it back in line as of that time. Remember, it was October. And then, once the construction documents proceeded full further, then we get a point where there was additional overages as a result of the design developing more. And at that point, that's when um, one of the items presented to us was to keep soil on site for the net savings of $400,000. That happened October, November. So that was before off budget. Yeah. Oh, we've been off budget since, as I said, last summer was an issue. But again, go back to the similar point too. We followed a process here. This is the process under the MSBA building to the school. We haven't varied from that process. We started seeing that we wanted to make some design adjustments back in August, September, but we started to do that. We didn't think it was going to require additional funding, but we didn't think it was going to repeat the project. As we progressed into the late fall, into November, December, it became apparent to us. But at this point, the project was moving forward as it was scheduled to move forward, as all projects of this nature move forward. And as the project is moving forward, the design documents are being developed. Unfortunately, again, when we got to this point with the design documents, we were over budget. And we were over budget more than we could uh, amend the design or reduce the design. We're, we're, our hands are tied to the extent that because we're in partnership with the MSBA, we can't change the square footage and we can't directly impact the uh, educational needs of, of the product or the, uh, you know, the educational needs of the product. So there's only so many things we can do. We can't say, as you might you know, wonder, why don't you just change the size of the project? Or why don't you just leave one building out of it? We can't do that. We've entered into an agreement with the MSBA. Our reimbursement is dependent upon us sticking to the plan. I have just a, a comment regarding the MSBA. When I go to the doctors now, I get a survey at the end of the process. How did everything go? When I got the car, I get a survey. I'm hoping the MSBA has some process by which they ask us at the end how it went. And if not, I'd like to see the administration draft a letter to them that bidding any project with a 20% you know, document is foolhardy at best. And I, I just can't believe and I, I can't believe I didn't pick up on that. At the beginning, if we were working off the document, 20% complete, and in this day, it would build the materials, and with the economy, you want to The MSBA should not allow that any longer. They should demand that projects be bidded on a more complete package of other towns and must be faced with this process that we are But I'll say this, that at the time that we asked the town for money for the designs, we got a million dollars. And again, that million dollars was for architectural fees, for project managers needs, for test forms, and all those types of things. And at the time, I remember all of us and, and the people at town meeting said, keep a million dollars, we need a million dollars. That, believe it or not, doesn't give you that much. So to come to the town and ask for three, four, five, six million dollars to get a complete set of design documents, and then have to come back after you've spent that money and say, hey, are you going to approve the project? It's not the way the system works. It's not, unfortunately, uh, that, that's, that's the reason you, know, you do it at that early stage. It was a jump right here. Yeah, just, uh, my name is Gordon Simpson uh, over in uh, Marlboro. Uh, just a little something on the vote yes and no here. You've got a vote yes that maintains the MSBA uh, reimbursements. Is that, are you insinuating that oh no means that they won't reimburse? No, I, I, what I'm saying is that if we have to make the kind of adjustments in this project that we highlighted or outlined tonight, I think
think it's going to cause us to have to possibly go back to the MSBA and potentially um, lose some of the reimbursement to the point where we might have to make adjustments where for um, every dollar of value that we're giving up in the project in the schools itself, we're only getting 50 cents back. That's my concern, and that's the committee's concern. So they might, even though they said they're going to give us 47 million, they may renege on that? It depends. I'm not, they wouldn't renege. It would basically mean that if we're adjusting the scope of the project, the amount that they're going to reimburse is going to be less. So for us to save a buck, and you know, for us to take a dollar worth of the value out of the project, it may only result in us getting 50 cents back. I'm going to skew it If I could just add, if I could just add to this, it's not a skew attack. It's not a but if we, if we take an item out of the product, if there is a number of items that they're reimbursed on, there's several items that they don't reimburse. Hey, we touch an item that they're reimbursed and we affect that, that will affect the reimbursement amount we receive from MSBA pertaining to that particular item. If that helps you understand. It's not as good as that. based on the $107 million restaurant, they're reimbursed. Their reimbursement, MSBA set, sets a salient on square footage cost that they'll reimburse the percentage off. At the time this project put on to a vote a year ago, that square footage salient that MSBA set was $275 a square foot. So this project, and it's artificially well. That's the way it's done so that they have enough money to spread around to other communities. So based on that, we exceeded that. So that's why our percentage rate is actually below 50% anyhow. But if you touch an item now that they're reimbursing on, that could affect the amount that we get back. Let me give you, let me give you an example of that. One of the things we thought of was just brainstorming what we could do to bring the project back in line. And one of the one of the ideas is not what if we didn't demolish the old high school when we're done? Just mothball it. Well, and, 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 and the savings on that was $2 million. I think I, I may have been on the wrong, but the, the, the idea will come across. Because MSBA is participating in that part of the project, paying their share of the cost of demolition, okay? And if the demolition cost was, for example, $2 million, we would save a million dollars by leaving it up. Because they would take their million dollars and not give it to us. Okay, and we would save just a million dollars. That's the kind of thing, if you touch them, something that's approved in the project, we only will save our share. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Hino, 427 Park Street. Uh, in looking at the newly uh, identified uh, considerations to be adjusted, I noticed that we had the elimination of the uh, fixed auditorium seating and the uh, amazing bleachers. Now, if the new proposal were not to pass, we'd be stuck with the minimum information of $3 million, and these items would have to come up. Am I understanding that correctly? You're saying it does pass? Right. If, if it doesn't pass, Jeff, um, We've got to find 13 to 16 million dollars to take out of the project, and those are the things that, at least at this point in time, we've identified. So, when I look at the auditorium seating, that means you have to imagine this. All of these seats, if I understand this correctly, all of these seats would not be here, and we all have thoughts, right? Because it's the fixed auditorium seating that would be eliminated. So, we all need to be standing here and having this conversation in the school for. Uh, we would not. So that would, would seem to me to be an issue of code. I, I, I can't imagine that that would get by code uh, at that point. <laughs> That's one, one point. The other point is this, is that we built a new football field, turf field, that uh, has been a huge success. Has been, I believe, producing some revenue for the town, correct? Yes, it does. So when you look in uh, an auditorium, an auditorium is a revenue-producing facility. And the money that you take off here, you take away money that is potentially to come in for future events. And uh, I know because the, the, the 
get into the school, they're going to do competition, and they're going to have to get the town to get some women, and they will be competing. That's all rented out. It's good size. has all the necessary technology, and, and they do have a stationary city. So uh, if we have to go back to that $107 million structure, we need to somehow have some revenue coming back in. And that's what this place would do. That's what the want to do. To cut back in that area would, would really hurt the project. No, I understand, Jeff. Believe me, we, we understand that. We understand the, the ramifications. <laughs> we could go back to a lot of the things that we've eliminated and make the same types of arguments. And, and clearly, no, 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 no. Clearly, I don't know what's the budget reducing uh, argument we would have. You have the auditorium and the football teams have part of the school anymore. Again, we'd have to dig in deeper and find some other things that we can substitute taking out other than what we've already identified. That, that's the problem. That's how difficult this process is. Trying to eliminate that amount of, of, to reduce the budget by 13 to 16 million dollars, you can only go so far before you start really uh, affecting the, the way the school is going to uh, good evening. My, my name is Eric Nietzsche, Park Street, you know, very, uh, uh, I have a number of questions. A lot of them will be short answers also. I'd like to thank that the Town of North Reading, the school committee, the second school committee, and the Fishing Movement have learned a great deal of lesson uh, a few years ago from the redevelopment of the Bachelor School. When that Bachelor School was redeveloped, a lot went into it, a lot of thought, a lot of planning, a lot of redesign, a lot of changes were made. And I like to trust and believe that that project was learned so we could put forward for the new high school and middle school. So far this evening, my confidence level is very low. I don't feel as though we have learned a great deal from the Bachelor School to go forward for the new high school and the middle school. As far as being in budget, that's to be projected and expected in real tax increases, budget overruns, and, and the lessons learned. Now, from this volume here that I have here, I'm going to go down, and I heard Mr. Delaney, I believe it was Mr. Delaney had mentioned earlier, on the, from, going right from the beginning, that there were site challenges. Mind you, uh, just for the record, I deal a lot of site design, commercial and residential, for the last 30 years as a professional civil engineer. Um, to see that the, the site has been tree cut, <coughs> landscape, not landscape, but tree cut and overhaul the development, I hear two issues that were site changes, and that is the uh, border vegetative wetland apparently has been found, as well as soil conditions. Now, when I do soil testing, I test the site to see if we have hazardous material, refusal, season high water table, proper soil for soil capacity, bearing capacity, for foundations. When I see at the beginning of the construction that we have site challenges, I question that if due diligence was planned ahead by the engineer to not detect these issues. So my question is, why not the North Reading Conservation Administrative Agent has not detected to the sidewalk this BBW? When I do site developments, residential as well as commercial, and I submit a notice of intent to the town, to any town, I don't even guess it's Burlington, the North Reading, Mornington, towns all over, that the conservation agent needs to establish border of state of wetlands prior to tree cutting, prior to land development, prior to getting any permits issued, prior to the construction. So that is just a small red flag for me. Based on the next one that I have here on page two, I find out that the estimated project is based on MPA 20% requirement. When I submit plans and documents for Chapter 40B projects to DEP, they require a 50% plan submittal before anything goes forward. 
To have a 20% requirement from MSBA, I think is ludicrous. It only, it only projects a lot of problems for any town, like North Reading, to come up with this forum. And I see here my local residents having a lot of issues that I'm presenting here to you. And I agree with the gentleman to my far right, uh, far left, is the estimated here, as another professional, that there is a problem here. When I take a look at the photographs and I see slides of newly constructed steel being erected, concrete form, footage being put in, not one wall is up yet, it's just concrete footage. And all of a sudden we have these, and you are employed by the town, we supply your salary, you work for us, and all of a sudden you're asking us to come back and well, I, I hate to admit this, I'm not getting paid. Okay. I, I hate to admit it. I'm talking as a town, town official. But you're asking, you're asking us to come up with more, with more money, basically 20%. So I, I think that the young lady behind me asking for 20% is not right, but that's the MSBCA requirement. And I know you're, you're stuck with, with that. But you have to really hear what we are saying, that you're asking us to make a vote to come with more money, and we're the ones footing the bill. My next point here is that I see a lot of things being like eliminated. I like to think and feel that that $1.2 million football field that was just built is going to be untouched. Correct? That's correct. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> now you're asking us for an update cost estimates from a 20% plan submittal by the engineer architect, and now we're at a 90% plan submittal. So now, am I correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Now you're saying that these cost overruns are based on 90% plan engineering architect plans to know rather than 20% that we received a year ago. The, the cost is not based on the 90%. Right. Document. So MSBA has a requirement to submit plans for 20%. I think you've done that. Now you've got to be receiving an estimate. Now based on 90% plans submitted, submittal, you're saying cost overruns. Okay, I'm following, I'm following you on this now. The tree cutting process up in the hill. When I submit plans for tree cutting, every single planning board, and any time I work for and work in, every planning board member comes up to me every single time. That's the same darn question. How many trees do you tie down? We want to see a minimum of two to five trees per lot maintained, four adult trees maintained. We have a tree award to go out there. If you're going to be tree cutting down trees within the zoning setback line, that's the fee that the homeowner has to pay. I can't answer the question of whether or not where the trees are that were cut in relationship to the setback lines and the lot lines. But I just think that they're not within the setback lines. So when I see trees being cut down, I see just completely white, moonscape. I like to think that the trees are cut down based on redesigned plans, based on the fact that you know, we have in soccer fields, football fields, baseball fields, parking lots. But I would trust that when plans are now being revised to cut down trees, the alternative is to, for replanting. Is there a replanting scheme, a landscaping scheme that's going to put in new trees that are going to be of either three inch, four inch, or five inch caliper in size, and the trees that were cut down, did the town recoup some gain in money for the lumber and the logging? Oh, good. For trees, part of the contract was uh, when it was negotiated, did any kind of buyback of uh, either chips or lumber was fixed the price. So the town doesn't get it, but it was effective the uh, That was based on the first go round. No, it's the bid of the, the, the current plan. And there's a landscaping plan that we put in there that's actually in the cut, 
that was a um, replant of the berm that's going up um, and all the other landscape. So um, there's about half a million dollars for landscaping and trees, not three inch caliper, but that are slightly smaller, some bigger ones, some uh, strategic areas. But right now that's on the table. There's $20,000 left. But am I correct to understand that? There's the widest scope of trees that were removed based on the plan and redesign? Yes. So with, the, with those trees being removed, did the town regain or recoup some of the The cost economy? of the clearing uh, was, uh, the, the, when it was bid by the forester, the low bid came in probably because all those trees were used for lumber and chips. So yes, it's, it's, in other words, the town doesn't get that money from getting clear the, the landscape car, uh, contract. So the landscaper kept that money. And he reduced it, it was an actual bid, so that he get cost. How does it benefit from the company? Would be better. That's what we don't get the money. Yes, so, yes. Okay. It's a town benefit. All right, thank, thank you. Sure, well, let me ask you a question. Can I ask you another specific question? Otherwise, I'm going to get something else. No, I'll have another question, but I'll let you reserve okay. it for later. Just explain your ideas for trying to ask the question. See where it is. So I mean, 
No, I, I, I respect. I respect. Painted concrete. The gym floor's not going to be painted. The rubber thing. These technical things. Yeah. 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 Ye
any more money from the state? No, I, as I tried to Okay, but want me to explain that? Please. We've already exceeded the maximum square footage reimbursement costs. The other maximum is $275 a square foot. Okay. We were already above that at the estimate. Okay. Okay, so we will not get any more financial assistance from the state if the vote goes to Rome. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. And that's true if, if this money had been appropriated last time. We still would have been sealing that where we are with reimbursement. I understand that. The, the cost estimates of the tax impact take that into consideration, but the full 13 to 16 million dollars will be borne by the town. No, he's asking, would we, got, would we be eligible on the 13 to 16 million for additional? Any additional money for this project, we cannot expect any more money from the state. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay, great. I'm hearing. It's not that great, but go ahead. <laughs> right. No, it's great for me. I'm understanding it. One, one last thing, and thank you for your time. I'm hearing that if we take away items from this project, some, and I may be misunderstanding this, some of the money that the state's giving us might be taken away from the project? I'm saying it depends on how far we have to go. So the, so the answer is there's a cost, well, there's a possibility that some of the state money, if we take items away, will be taken away from the project. Depending on how far we have to go with this thing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Anthony Serrini, 28 Tower Road. Thank you, well, ladies and gentlemen. It's not easy up there. Did I hear at the beginning of the uh, presentation that uh, our cost that was invested so far is about $20 million? We spent $9 million. We committed to spend $4 million. How much? I'm sorry? The commitment is $40 million. $40 million. Contracts are Okay, fantastic. Um, I, I voted for the, uh, the school. I think it's an important thing. I've been here 12 years, um, but I, I, I can't personally say that I can vote for any additional money at this time. Personally, um, we keep I keep hearing about cost effectiveness. Um, what we're going to do with this 13 million later on is going to cost us more money. But we're coming back after a year, and we're looking for a 15 cent additional chunk of money uh, to get the school that we promised guaranteed a year ago. Uh, as another gentleman who stated earlier, we were promised from, I assume these same people, and I voted for it, that that was guaranteed, not go over 1.7 million. Now we're getting a guarantee from whomever. Uh, I personally, I'm in business. I'm an adult like everyone here. We each have a vote. It's a beautiful community. Uh, I, I don't believe it. So, uh, personally, myself, I cannot vote for this. Uh, uh, finally, I think it's a community. I think you all doing a great job. I think the school is needed. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm hearing over here two trees were cut down. Personally, myself, I would rather pay the extra 13 million and make those people that are part of our community like and bring it into the school and I mean, over John school. These people here that were hurt, which are part of the community, that happened to me, I'd be up in arms. They should be treated first, and I'd rather see the money go to them, then go out home, than bring any money additionally into the school. Thank you for your time. Addressing the three issues, there was a subcommittee set up for the Secretary of School Building Committee as the Abundance Subcommittee that has worked with the Abundance in terms of what, if the additional funding comes through, what can be done in terms of mitigating the effect on the particular profits. That's, that's been underway for the last month, month and a half. There are actually renderings that the landscape architect is about to commence in order to show those Abundance what we would be able to do and work with them if this additional funding was approved. So we, we haven't turned we haven't turned away from them. We have, I haven't heard from you and I'm gonna butter. I'm just the road. I'm the one that's right there in the midst of it. And I have not heard one word from you since you promised me that you weren't cutting the trees down. Not nothing. I got a letter and I, I got a letter saying I can do, do email. Uh, we have no, I have not received a notice for a meeting. So. There was a couple of days ago, one of which the Jeff Wetton had gone around and put notices on homes. He did not. He did not get my help. Well, he right to the I was on that. You just saying, and I totally agree that they're being compensated or made whole is based on passing this uh, amendment or vote, uh, which is next month, at 
adding 13 to 16 million. Uh, that doesn't apply with me that these people should be compensated directly by the town, separate or within the school committee. They should be made whole. They have been wronged by the, the town. They should be made whole. Not, not all based on this vote that we're being forced to, to go. Everything this evening, and it's been a fantastic slide presentation, has been we're moving forward. We should be moving forward, or maybe we should. What should be on there, now there's 44 million, I take it back, but if it was 20 million, there should have been a vote to, to, to kill it. Right here, 44 million is just too much of an investment. But those of others, if it were me, I'm telling you, I'd be picking the town hall. Oh, thank you. Uh, I guess I, I don't understand what you're
That's how that was that was missed. No one would have known until we told him. Until we got it out. Yeah. We told him. Yeah. So why would that have to do with Because I got first class and I was not the mother state, but we had it done. So and they had to pull money. We did, correct. See, I get it. Every time you turn around, they tell you one thing and it's something else. And it's more money. That's why I'm happy. Yes, sir. Darren from Hazel Street. Thank you for indulging me one last time. I have a few quick questions. Um, on the, you know, we heard the state process, right, with the 20%. I guess I want to just clarify for my own purposes the, the process. So we had to go forward and ask for the money in the application with the 20% estimate. Did we have to go with the two and a half override with the 20% estimate? Could we have waited until the engineering and design was more mature? Well, if, if, if we waited for the design to be able to we would have had to appropriate more money for that purpose. <coughs> we had a million dollars. And, and like I said, you know, it's not an easy process. When we, when we asked for the million dollars for, for the schematic designs, it seemed like a lot. There were some people saying, well, just spend 500000 so We don't want to throw that kind of money in it. We don't know we're going to do the project. But the million dollars got us, and our architect, I think, probably worked, you know, more time than what we even paid for. But the million dollars got us the schematic design, which was basically a 20% 20, 20 design document. And it, it, you know, obviously it's, it's difficult to fully price out something in a 20% design document. And the second question, if you ask the community for an override, again, for the 13 or 16 million or whatever the final number comes out to be, if that does not pass, is there gonna be any movement to ask for maybe half or some other amount that you think the community might be willing to pay to get back something? Well, I, I think that that's, that's a meeting we'll have immediately after the election. That's the problem. Therein lies the problem, you know, because it, 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 if we don't get the funding, we're gonna run into delays, and the number's just gonna grow, and, and, uh, and I think the project's gonna have to change, but I, it's, just, it's just gonna be more of an expense to the town in the long run, I think, if we don't fix the problem now. All right, and the last thing I'll say is that the guaranteed estimate, you know that it's going to be in writing, it's going to be a contract. Um, you know, I feel, I guess, comfortable. I have some people saying they can't believe the number. I think we can get a guaranteed number. It is what it is. They're going to build risk into it. Um, because you're asking them to take on some risk by giving you that number. That's right. I will say, though, that I do agree with the statement you made, that had I been standing here, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I feel a little bit helpless, probably like a lot of people in the room. But I think if you would come to me and ask me for $120 million and to vote yes for that, I think that would and, and you know, it, 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 that's the thing. When, when, we, when we got that number, I, I think every person on the committee sincerely felt, okay, this is a number. This, it seemed like a high number, it seemed like a big number, and I think we were all comfortable that that was going to get us through, that, that we had enough uh, cushion there to build this project. When it's, it started becoming apparent that there wasn't enough money we tried to deal with it, we tried to fix it without coming back to the community. And then when we got to the point where we felt we were compromised on the project, we felt an obligation to come back to the community. I can remember sitting in the room when we first started this process, and every single person in that committee saying, we're not going back to the town to ask for more money. Um, but it got to a point where we, we didn't feel we had the authority to just compromise the project without coming back and asking the community whether or not they wanted to support the additional funding or take the reduced project. So that's why that's why we're here, and that's why we're going forward with a town meeting and a vote to see what the people in the community want. Just to go back to the first question we got here, once we submitted the 20% design documents and the MSB, MSBA approved it, we had time to wait in order to further develop that. We had 120 days from that date in order to get this to a vote to see whether or not the town would do yeah. So we had a very short time. Once again, the MSBA process that we followed through. And if we didn't approve that within 120 days, we were gone. We were off the list. We didn't get the time. And so it is, it's a tough process, but again, it's one that has, it has worked. Uh, Rick Bowden, Freedom Drive. Um, first of all, I wanted to make a comment. I, I've probably been sleeping on, at the switch for the last couple of years when this process was unfolding. And I'm not a townie. I've only been here 33 years. As a, You're a comic bagger. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment for coming from you. But I also want to say that I know that it's countless hours of, and it's a thankless job, and I wouldn't be paid to be 
be standing where you are tonight and in the previous meetings and have to face these people because the level of cred credibility at this moment in time is about as low as I've seen it in this town in 33 years. And I think there's reason for that. But in any event, I wanted to compliment all the people that have put their time and effort. It's a thankless job. But I do have some questions. Uh, first of all, how much of the contract of the 107.7 is PMA's slice of the pie, if you will? It was a rough number. Ten? No, no, PMA, the project manager, no. It was just over two. Two. And how about the architectural slice of the pie? The drawings? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of pointing fingers, but in this event, in this process, we'll call it a journey, for lack of a better word, <clears throat> is there's culpability here. I, I don't want to litigate this case here. I'm not a lawyer, Jerry, as we well know. But I have been in banking and finance for only 35 years, and I do uh, residential lending. So I have a feel for like what the ultimate goal is going to be and the value of our homes is going to soar after this project is done. That was, that, was, that was almost a joke, but that's it's it's not a joke. Well, I, 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 I have only little feelings about that. I have a lot of hopes in this town of Apple or not because of a lot of work, a lot of projects that are not clear. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. We've taken a hit as well, but nonetheless. So the point I'm making is if this culpability here with whether it be 20% or 25% set of drawings completed and we get the bid, and, and there's got to be some issues that have been laying below the surface that could be found. And if there, we'll call it contribution from our professionals down the road, whether it be two, three, four years, if you have to litigate or settle a lot of court, or however it comes about, I'm guessing that their insurance policies and their resources probably would be willing to contribute 13 to 16 million dollars to put the rubber floor down and put permanent chairs in the, in the, in the uh, gymnasium. You know, it's just a projection, but th I, that's, that's a comment. The, the other question I have is, how much money has been determined that we have to pay for the uh, demolition and the removal of this building and the other one as well, based on the fact that my understanding, and I've done a little bit of homework on this, I guess there's, there's some contaminated waste here, like for instance, caulking that are around the windows that have seeped into the cement, the concrete, and the buildings themselves. So there's got to be... Again, more culpability, the same thing with the wetlands not being found. That, that all translates to a cost. Someone fell asleep at the switch in the process. And I'm not, this is not personal. It's not personal with you and I. It's not personal with anyone in this room. It's not personal with any of these individuals sitting here. But this culpability in the professional, we'll say, management of this project at several different levels. I'm not sure where yet, but I'm really fascinated by if we can determine that. So the, the hazardous waste thing could be a really large expense of getting rid of all of this that was. was uh, again, I don't, I don't know where the hazardous waste is coming from. It's an old no. building, obviously, and the building is scheduled to be demolished. So that's all the fact of the cost. But when uh, you say when you talk about the project, honestly, I can say this from being with this project from its inception. We have moved forward at every step, at every deadline. The project is on schedule. Everything is moving forward. And I don't want to minimize this. The problem we have is we underestimated the cost. And the cost has increased. Everything else with this project is moving forward. The work is being done. The foundations are in. The steel is coming. The, 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 the people approved this project. The, the community approved this project by a four to one vote. And again, and I don't, again, I don't want to minimize it. But for the cost overrun, the change in the price, everything else about the structure, we've met all the deadlines by the MSBA. You know, the, 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 the process to get to where we are today is an overwhelming process. Going with the, the planning through the documents, the preparation, the applications to the MSBA, it's a huge process before you ever put a shovel in the ground. The, you know, and, and I want to emphasize that again. We took our final design at the 20%, I'll be at level. I was there, we brought it into the MSBA, we presented it to their experts, that they reviewed it. It then goes before the MSBA committee for their review and approval. And you hold your breath, you hope that they're going to approve the project. And they did. Now, believe me, at, at the time, we were comfortable with the number we had. But everything else we've done on this project, and the 20 people that are on this committee, have moved this thing forward. With, we're desperately trying to keep it on track and on schedule. 
I started my I started my comments by commending all of you for all the work that you've done, and I don't want to diminish that. I understand that you're on budget. I mean, on target. Budget is a different issue, but I think there's responsibility and culpability here that hasn't really been highlighted. And I understand you don't want to litigate it tonight. There are people here that represent the companies that we're projecting to move forward with. But you're asking for, we'll call it the North Reading Big Dig, for lack of a better term, but maybe 20 million when we're done, or 16, or whatever the number is. But I think that the, if we defer some of the things, maybe all 24 items that the superintendent highlighted, and the camp comes to 16 million, I feel pretty comfortable with the people that are driving this bus, and I know that I'd certainly be happy to jump on board and help you guys, but I mean, turn, uh, we have to litigate outside of the confines of the project itself to recover 10, 12, 14, 16 million dollars from where the culpability is identified. I feel very comfortable saying that if we defer it now, we don't know, that we, by the time this project comes to a screeching halt, we'll have the extra 480,000 for the landscaping, and we'll have enough for the chairs and the rubber tips for the stair belts. I mean, Rick, that's all, my opinion. With all due respect, and I respect your opinion, it's not even remotely possible at this point in time. You know, we have that with town council, and, and, the, and the, the whole issue, and I don't want to get into the legal piece of this because it's kind of, it's a legal matter, but I'm telling you right now that to, to suggest or to even think that we're going to be able to get this funding as a result of that type of an action. It's not even remotely possible. I wouldn't mislead you with that, I wouldn't get you with that. I mean, I, I, again, our objective is to try to go forward and fix this right now when it makes sense to fix it. That, that's what we're trying to do. Instead of dragging out or extending out over a period of years where we're going to be you know, working with a building that's not what anybody wants and a building that's going to cost us money as we move forward, as I said before, in both capital expenditures and budget appropriations. Hi, uh, Richard Craig, Central Street again. Um, the 13 to 16 million dollars that we're, you're asking for, now this is just for the 90 percent of the construction costs that you've gone through. Uh, the guaranteed price there. The, the remaining part of that pie that I see in the approved original budget is for kind of the inside, the, the chairs, all this other stuff, the computers, all that stuff. Um, is all that 13 to 16 million just construction or is any of this focused toward that part of the project or are we going to be coming back here as this project becomes closer to being finished? Oh, by the way, for us to finish, for the kids to have desks, we're going to need to have some more money. We haven't touched the furniture, fixtures, and equipment part of this budget. That's safe in place. Is that something that is a public record that we could actually, like, you could see, like, what we're paying for certain things? Because that'd be, I mean, I'm very curious to see, like, what we're paying for a desk, what we're paying for a computer, what we're paying for light fixtures. Um, I believe, I mean, that people get rich on these projects. Um, and I just feel that there's definitely, if more eyes are looking at the actual budget, I think all of us are going to end up paying less out of our pockets. In terms of those items that you described, none of, none of those items have been purchased yet. That's, that's down the road. Yeah, but your, but budget, in terms your budget was from 2011. Now, everything else is you're paying for because of the inflation and everything. Now, are those items not going to be going up in price either? I can't answer that as a state of that. So that budget you know, hasn't been touched. Next year, I mean, in two years, when this project becomes close to being finished, you're going to be coming back and they'll be having another meeting because there's going to be not enough money in that budget. It's all. Let me address, I think this will answer both your questions. The first concern was about now just only having 90% construction documents. But domain is going to get the guaranteed maximum price. Even though it's at 90%, that they guarantee 100%. I'm not, I'm not at, honestly concerned about the, the 13 to 16 million, that is all for the construction. I'm actually talking about the remaining part of the pie to, to kind of finish the inside, not the construction part of it. It's all part of that guaranteed maximum price. All, all that is part of it. So there will be no more increases. But is there a, is that going to be public record? I mean, can we? Yeah, that is public record. I mean, you can get your hands on everything at Town Hall. So if we did, uh, 
a few volunteers wanted to go in and just kind of, I don't know, I mean, do some of my shopping, so to speak, uh, and see what we're paying for for these things. I mean, I know we don't need $10,000 computers. I don't know what we're paying for the new computers going in, but I think I'd be very curious just to see, because my confidence in the project manager is, is very low at this point. Yeah, I mean, obviously everything for public record on meetings or public meetings. Uh, we have 20 people on the committee made up of people as CPAs and attorneys and doctors and construction people, um, engineers. Uh, that's, that's the reason we have to make up the committee that we do. We also have the town finance department that works on this, our, our town administrator. Um, so again, these are the things that we're monitoring. But you've got to understand too, again, we, we have, you know, we're, we're relying on a lot of those things. From the bids that we're getting on a lot of this stuff. That's, that's how it's being priced. If the bids come in higher than we anticipated, then that's how it ends up costing. And we do have contingencies, obviously, in the budget to cover any overruns. Yes, Mark C. Bailey, 21 doing that. I want to thank everyone involved with the project and all of your hard work and uh, Herculean efforts. I want to address just a couple of issues. Uh, one thing that I believe is Mr. Bowden. Um, said about waiting. Waiting costs money. Seven months at $400,000 a month is almost $3 million. So if you waited to see if you were going to get an unlikely settlement with the amount of the whole project, you have to take additional funds out of the project for the delay, correct? Uh, well, any delay is to require the funds to right. so, so you're behind the eight ball already. Um, I appreciate everyone's frustration and anger. I share it, I shared it. But there comes a time where you have to look forward and not backward. Um, the board of selectmen is going to pursue a responsible agreement, whatever is possible within the law or the law, whatever is going to make sense. That has to happen on a parallel track to this project. That train can't be in front of the train of this project because that's going to slow down and end up costing us three million more dollars that we're going to have to take out of the project if we can't keep going. Sometimes it's time to cut your losses and move on, take a deep breath, realize maybe things haven't gone as you planned, but that the best prospect is to move forward. I don't want to build a white elephant. I don't want to have a big building in the center of town that teachers and staff struggle with every day to educate our children because kids are tripping over each other in the gym because the wonderful master's program that I saw here a few weeks ago has no permanent seats in the auditorium and no lights to put that on, that's who it's going to hurt. It's not going to hurt any project manager or any architect that you might be responsible. It's not going to ultimately hurt the SSBC members who might spend a few more sleepless nights. It's going to be the students and the teachers and the administrators that need to cope with the school that's less than adequate every day. It's not going to hurt the MSBA either. So I ask that you consider what's the best track and you know whether we're gonna throw bad bad money after good money for putting up the school, bad money in delay and getting less for a dollar, or it's time to say we're upset, we're angry, but we need to move on. I attend a lot of the SSBC meetings. There are very few people there. Anyone is welcome anytime to attend a meeting, to talk to any of these folks at the front of the room, have answered my questions and spent quite a large amount of time in person and on the phone with me whenever I have a question. I urge you all to do the same, but I ask you to please, you know, take a deep breath, and if you're going to make a vote based on anger or emotion, that's not going to be the best financial or educational decision for our town. Thank you.
they represented to us they're confident that that number will not exceed the 16 million. Are they pretty confident on that? Is there not? Well, they've got their estimates back on those 90 percent construction documents. So now the issue is um, trying to trying to get the number down somewhere below the 16. So they have their estimate, uh, and the uh, architect, our architect has their estimate. And now it's a question of negotiating something in between those two numbers. Okay. Uh, have you tried to uh, get any extra funds from the state? Uh, uh, and looked at the website, which is construction at the Essex. Uh, by the way, same architect, Gilbane's building there. Yeah, I saw, saw the Gilbane yeah. sign out there. Same, I'm sorry, architect, I mean the same construction yeah. company. Yeah. And, I, and I look at that SX website and they they got a lot more money from the state to build that school. Uh, they, they got like two funds and their part that they, the taxpayers actually paid was only like 10, 15% of the whole project the taxpayer paid. So, uh, we're paying a lot higher percentage for our project than they are paying. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into the formula to determine the reimbursement. A lot of it has to do with demographics and wealth of the community and things like that. So ours was based on that formula. Believe me, everything is figured out right down to the tenth of a percent. But to answer your question, I, I think obviously, you know, something we might want to do is try to have some discussions with the MSBA to see if there's a possibility that we can get additional funding. And I, but we don't want to even represent that because it's not on the table right now. It's certainly something as a committee that we'll probably discuss and talk to our state representative and state senator about. And, and, and has there any consideration been done on the architectural design in general of the building um, to reduce the, you're talking about the little details in the building, but as far as the general architecture that can still be changed possibly? Very much to reduce the cost. We've made that. We've done a lot of that. I mean, things that we did at the very start of the process. Uh, that we took the design and we took out things that you know, we didn't want to take out, the architect didn't want to take out, but we reduced those things right away. And so when we got into these high core things that we started having a problem and we realized that we were going to need additional money. But there's been a lot of uh, review of the design. Is this a union job? Yes. Um, it's a union job. <laughs> That's the expensive too. Yeah. <laughs> This has been a tough night up here, but it's nothing compared to my game of the poker game tomorrow night that uh, I'm probably going to get killed. So. Risk going into this, you now absorb as well. 
we don't have a lot of risk until we get to this guaranteed maximum price. That's our that's our price. You're talking about a lump sum contract, which would happen later on, which is a whole different method than we're using here. The town voted to go with CM and risk, but at the same time in the project and keep it with it. Yeah, I mean, in addition, to the, the, the MSBA recommends doing it this way, the diary CM at risk, because you get additional reimbursement when you do it, and it brings the contract on at an early stage of the project to, to, to be involved in the project at the very first stage. And I think the reimbursement for that is an extra 1% uh, from, from the state for doing it that way. Hi, uh, Paul Sheridan of Elm Street. I got a question. This building is going to be torn down, which makes that open sense to me, but we won't get into that. I, I feel ashamed when I have to tell somebody down in that football field from out of town when they want to use a facility that uh, there's a plastic closet down behind the trailer box. Uh, good luck. That ball got dropped. When this project is complete, notice I have a positive attitude. When do they go at halftime? When's the, when's the football team go at halftime? Again, without the additional funding, we cannot provide the team which is necessary to accommodate the use Assume you get everything you want. I'm asking. Wait, oh, I'm not familiar with the project. I don't know anything I trust to say. If we get the funding, there will be team rooms of bathrooms located down at the short field. You're going to build a building down near the field? Is that what you're saying? A building down near the field that will serve as team rooms, bathrooms, and storage space. Because again, you're right, the high school buildings will be quite a distance from the, from the turf field. Quite a distance, right? Well, why do we have to tear down the gym? Why do we have to tear everything down? Is the MP up over that or what? Uh, again, you know, we've been through that. This part of the plan from day one was to, to tear the building down. We actually vetted this one fairly recently about whether or not we can even leave it up and we just can't. The building's just not good enough. Sure. I understand they can't but and there's no way there's no way that, that we could afford to out of operations budget to maintain it. And again, this, the, initially the way it was explained to us is if we leave this building up, this building if it's any part of our high school property, then we're not entitled to duplicate the auditorium or the gymnasium and the new building. So there's a lot of issues moving through all of that. And, and again, it doesn't make sense. So I think everybody on the board of select from the school committee, secondary school building com committee agrees that we can't, we can't leave the building. It doesn't make sense to leave it up? Is that what you said? That's right. Mm -hmm. It seems to satin with the state. That's where this whole problem started. They, they, they let you uh, build this project based on 20 or 30 percent. You wouldn't build a garage up behind your house based on 20 or 30 percent. What if they were giving you 49 million dollars? Yeah, but now you got to spend that. I understand. I understand. But, but again, it, it is the process. And again, they are our partners. And, and we, we, we can't just make unilateral or arbitrary changes without working with them. I understand, Jerry. I mean, you're all bruised up there tonight, so I'm not trying to beat you up anymore. But we're not going to be on a quarterback on this, but you can't help but look back and see where things started going bad. I mean, you got to admit to it. I won't hit you anyway. No, oh, thank you. I appreciate your comments. Jeff Lewis, three kings girl. I served on the back of the school committee, the uh, building committee, and that project was three million dollars. Was it three million? Well, two million. Two million dollars over. And we went back to the time asked for both. And the police station was also significantly over budget by double. And that also went to a vote in the past. So I just want to be, you know, this process has happened before. And two of the town's projects, so I'll just people need to understand. Yeah, it was a bad I mean, obviously it was a gift. We started out with a bid, it was a different process, we were going for the MSBA, and the batch of the school, when the bids came back, it was a couple million dollars more than was appropriated. We went back and we got the money, and we built the school for $18.5 million. It's won a historic district award. Anybody that's been that batch of the school, 
the town could be very, very proud of it. And that was an absolute necessity at the time. We did that without reimbursement, retroactively, we were able to get about eight, eight and a half million dollars of reimbursement for that building. So it ended up costing us about $10 million. Okay. Well, I'm a serious member of the Board of Selectmen. And having been uh, the member of the Board of Selectmen, along with my finance director and town administrator, that worked on the financing of the original vote on the project, I think there's one item that needs to be just clarified. We borrowed of the roughly $60 million the town share of the project. We've already borrowed $50 million of it, and that's the kitchen tax bill just recently. Uh, the reason why we didn't borrow all of it is that we didn't know exactly what the final number would be. And we didn't need that money right away because obviously the project is over a three year, three and a half year pro uh, time frame, and there's a burn rate associated with uh, the project. Uh, we borrowed the money up front, the 50 million, because of the opportunity to get a relatively low interest rate. Now, as we go forward here, I urge everybody to consider the fact that the project needs to be completed, one, and two, that we need to approve the expenditure of the additional money in order to get the project to keep on schedule and to allow the bids to go up and go forward. Now, there was some talk earlier about going after our uh, architect and uh, OPM associated with their culpability on the project, and the Board of uh, Selectmen is investigating that, as Mr. Delaney said. Now, if we obtain money as a result of that, then downstream, we're not gonna borrow this additional money until later in the project. So, if we have additional money come in or the bids come in a little lower, we won't borrow all the money that you approve. But failure to approve the money now, approve the expenditure now, means the project gets delayed. So I urge you to take that into consideration that please, we need to move the project forward and we need to approve it now. And believe me, the Board of Selectmen, the Building Committee, School committee, everybody that's involved is going to make sure that we only go out and bond what's absolutely required to finish the project. Uh, obviously, not exceeding the amount of town meeting approves. Thank you. I budget, 
everything is moving forward. The site out there, that it's a difficult site. Our contractor has it under control. Uh, the buildings are going up. We're on schedule. It, it's a question of the money. And, and, and I, as much as I respect everybody's opinion, I start to resent it a little bit when people say one thing after another has gone wrong. It hasn't gone wrong. There's not enough money. That's a mistake that was made with the original estimate. Other than that, everything is moved forward. Uh, oh, you from uh, Wall Street. Just a question for you. The, the initial 13 to 16 million, does that have to be, or can that be applied as a separate note and can we defer payment instead of being a 25 to 30 year, one year? So can you rewrite that whole? I got no answer. <coughs> it will be a separate borrower. Um, and the, the Board of Selectmen and the Treasurer will determine just what the the, uh, the length of term and, and, and negotiate the, the rate. But it will be a separate bar. We borrowed 50. We're, we, we have another 10 to borrow within the original authorization. But we, 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 we authorize to We need to be authorized to borrow. We can't, we can't. We've got to be able to tell the MSBA that we have got the funds to do the project. Is the 50 million locked in or guaranteed? The 50 million is locked in. We, can it be the bonds have been sold. Can it be rewritten to the editor of what the town will be responsible for in addition to what the uh, state will reimburse? Uh, in the way, instead of 25 years, 30 years, 40 years, will that help the overall tax burden the majority of the people in the town? It is written as a 25 year bond. Can it be extended? Oh, the 30 years? I guess I... Bond of duration costs more money than interest, of course, because you're, you're borrowing the money for a longer time, so the ultimate cost to the town is going to be more, the longer you, the longer you carry it. Uh, I think that's the decision for the treasurer and for the board of select. It's not, it's not the purview of the Secondary School Building Committee to make that decision. But ha having said that, I think the way it has been borrowed is the appropriate amount of time. Now, the, the, the next two, the other $10 million, the plan would be to borrow that for a similar period of time when we need, based upon the cash flow. The 13 to, to $16 million, that also would be borrowed, but then be later out, what would happen is we, we would do uh, we would do a ban, which, which means we would only have to pay the interest on that during during that period. We wouldn't put it into a a bond until probably maybe two years after we, we started that. Uh, then the, the determination would be made based upon current interest rates effect on the taxes, what other items that are that are currently exempt debt in the town have fallen off of the, the debt schedule because there are other things going on that are, that are coming off. And I think that we have to look at the capacity of the town to pay that debt and what the appropriate term should be given all those other things that are going on. But again, that's not within our purview, it is, it is the, the selectmen and the treasurer will make that decision. But those, those kinds of uh, factors will enter into the determination of how long the borrowing goes on. The cash flow requirements of the project will determine when it needs to be borrowed. I don't know if that answers your question. The only other thing I'd like to add is that, I want to remind folks that based upon the advice of the town of Bond Council at the time we were going up to finance the $50 million dollars, based upon their work and work of our finance director, we were able to get a 3.5 interest rate on an initial $50 million, dollars, which was less than what we had projected at the time of the vote. So uh, I think in terms of the financial aspect of it, the town is very proof of what they do, how they go about borrowing and financing whatever is borrowed. Uh, did 
Deanna has her mind right away. Um, I don't have anything prepared, which is unusual for me. And that's because I wanted to come in here, whatever I had to say. I've been to a couple of meetings to try to understand as best I can the full scope and the magnitude of the situation that's in front of us. And while I think that we have a tremendous responsibility to hold the state accountable for the process that got us into this situation, because it, it clearly didn't work for North Reading, in my sense is it probably isn't working for other communities, and before we bankrupt our state, we should reevaluate that process and push back on them. I also truly believe that we should move forward our culpability with PMA and Lord Whittier, because I do feel like there's a principle of accountability that needs to be addressed here. Um, as a long-term education advocate, I truly believe that, you know, the education of our children in this community in the past and years to come is of paramount concern to everybody, and that that hasn't changed. We started this project because it was a desperate need that was identified, and it was voted on. That need has not changed. And I understand the words that things will not uh, impact the educational programs, and I just disagree with that wholeheartedly. Academics is part of the education that our children get, but it's not what gets them up in the morning. It's not what motivates them to succeed. It's part of the process. What encourages them to understand how to be a citizen and a future leader in this community or this state of this world is teamwork, camaraderie, spirit, community, challenges, problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, imagination, all these different types of things. And when you take away their performing arts, when you take away their sports, when you take away their chorus and their band and the other things that are likely going to have to you know, be impacted, that is part of an educational program. And we are going to impact them if we don't secure additional funding. And while I find this very morally difficult, I used to lose sleep over the fact that we needed a new school and work with so many of you to try to secure a vote that we all believed in. And now I'm losing more sleep because of what has morally happened to this community and the fact that we're standing here asking for more money, knowing that some of our neighbors can't afford it. Well, I can't sleep at night worrying about that. But I also can't sleep at night knowing that there are generations of children to come that need to have educational security and opportunities to build teamwork and camaraderie and be part of a band and a chorus that they're proud of, or a master's program, or a sporting event, or a, a team, or whatever it takes for them to be good citizens and not have idle time to get into trouble. So I'm very, very frustrated and I'm angry just as much as anybody else. And I've been dragging my feet and being very quiet. But I find it hard at this point knowing that we have to come together as a community to work towards a solution to do what's best for the children in this, in this community, not just for this year, but for 20 to 50 years from now. And I know that when I'm having conversations with my kids across the table right now, it's very, very difficult to talk about taxes as opposed to the things that matter in their life today. And they're bummed out. And I know that I have to come to terms with something that it makes me very uncomfortable. We have to talk about taxes, we have to talk about money, and we have to talk about things that are very, very difficult with our neighbors. But I'm willing to have those conversations because we have to. And I hope that you'll all come to terms with the opportunity to ask your neighbor and your friend and your citizen to come to the next meeting to learn what they have to learn to make an informed decision.
discussions here. He asked me to ask, um, once you eliminate all of the things like air conditioning, sports fields, the auditorium, uh, or the effectiveness of the auditorium, um, you're impacting my work methods, whether the kids are going to want to go to school. And I think ultimately that's what all of us are feeling. Um, I know, as Deanna has had, I've had discussions with my kids, and I'm trying to understand because I very much fought for this school um, and the funding for it. And just having to talk to my kids and say, well, you know, that's not going to happen, that might not happen. It's a really difficult conversation to have. And unfortunately, we're also feeling the tax impact, as we all are. But it's just really hard to say, well, we're not going to carry through, we're going to build you that shell of school, and you won't be able to really enjoy it. So that's, I'm honoring my, my, uh, my comment that I will ask that question or, or make that statement on behalf of my son. But I think it's felt by a lot of parents and we're feeling very uneasy about where this is going. The committee does a lot of build that school. But as Jerry said earlier, we thought there was an obligation to go back to the community. The community that overwhelmingly supported this project a year ago. Explaining the issues and making the decision internally, the board's not going to make the decision, the school committee making the decision. It's the community that makes that decision as to what school is going to be built. We don't like the items that are on the list at all. It's a very difficult, painstaking process that we work through. We're not happy about what you've seen. Uh, we're upset. We're angry too. And I think it's quite But we don't. We don't. Mark, they to show a kid, well, you're not next. That's what I'm asking everyone to think about. In addition to the tax implications, there's so much more in the end. Right. Uh, Jeff, you're, uh, it's the point of, uh, for the community to know. My question is, could this have been just taken at a special town meeting vote? Could this, did this have, uh, have to be presented to the uh, town meeting and did it have to be uh, put up to a town-wide vote? Or is it something that you feel that it's the best path to go? No, given the magnitude of the budget increase that we need, it has to go through the whole process. I think okay. special town meeting is special. Okay. I think the entire community has the right to Well, I agree. Well, I agree. I, agree. I, just, I was just trying to identify the You may be thinking about the end over the question. Hand over just, they have a school project right now that they went and just had a special town meeting to get additional funding. But the additional funding that we're to is we get a certain percentage of the original budget. That's why there was a necessity to go to a special election. I just needed to do something. They went, they went back and borrowed $5 million to complete the renovation of the bank box school. And I think that was done like halfway through the project that they had for them. Yeah, again, uh, thank you for the opportunity to ask the question one more time. Uh, for the record, my name is Eric B.G. Park Street. Uh, two questions or two comments and um, a qu question number one is uh, the architect engineer is saying to you that by March 11th they're going to come with a maximum cost analysis uh, for 100%. So right now we are in 90% and that equates to the 13 to 16 million dollars. So between 90 and 100%. No, they're going to rely on the 90% Construction documents to give us a hundred percent cost figure, and that's somewhere between thirteen and sixteen million. So we're not anticipated to be above that thirteen and sixteen million dollars. No, there'll be no additional cost assessed from the ninety to one hundred percent documents because they've given us that figure at ninety percent, as, as Jim said when we got up there. Okay, because uh, for a moment there, uh, uh, fifty minutes ago, how about I'm thinking um, when the hundred percent does come in, I'm thinking there'll be another uh, increase. Okay. Yeah, the guaranteed maximum price will come in at ninety percent documents. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, on the uh, estimated tax impact, it's uh, $155 to $190 per year for $13, $16 million. Uh, I, was, I haven't heard anything tonight, and I haven't seen anything on, written on the slideshow of how long that tax impact is going to last for. In 25 years. 25 years? If, I, if that was mentioned, I apologize, I've been not here for 25 years. Um, okay. I, I understand where you're coming from, and I hear a lot of comments uh, as far as attacking you, and I hear a lot of comments in supporting you. I have four children in this town, and I have two presently in the high school, and 
two in Masters. And they're in band and they're in sports. I'm not here to take away anything from our students. But what I'm here to state is I hear the MSBCA, uh, uh, the MSBA requesting 20% documents. They come to you, you have requirements to, uh, to oblige to. The engineer and architect comes in with their requirements. Their cost analysis is based on 20%. All of a sudden, we get the 90 percent cost add-ons, overruns, add-ons, that increases, and all of a sudden now you come to the town people and we're all up in arms. I'm not here to shoot the messenger and tell me you're wrong, but it's, it's, it is a little frustrating. But I'm here to support the school system, our children, and I like to, and lastly, I like to say that I, we depend on you the school committee, town officials, our elected officials, to keep in check all the people who you hire, who you bring in to build a school, the Baptist school, or the police station. So out of due respect to the engineer and architect, uh, I deal with other civil engineers and architects plenty of times in the last 30 years. I just like to address to you that keep it all in check. And uh, we can hear our frustrations and how and what we're hearing tonight, and we we just can go on and imagine what we're going to be hearing in the next month from now. I thank you for your time. I thank you for the evening. I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. And I wish you all good luck and success. For well, those are good comments, and again, we're not just the messenger. You know, as a secondary school building committee, we have to take responsibility. And we have. One, just one question. Within that 13 to 16 million, is there a half a million dollars in that pie to take care of the dirt that's up behind the school? And take, take that half a million that you say and move it off site to satisfy the people uh, on Colorado Road. Without the trees. Just put yeah, there would be money in there to convert that into a, a firm, okay? That would be something that would be planted in the landscape, et cetera. Um, that's the investment plan as of right now. Certainly, getting the additional funds will give us more flexibility. Uh, that's the plan right now. It's greater burn, landscape to burn, to make sure that the water and the rain can run all over, away from that province. And we also, again, have instructed our landscape architect to come up with a plan to try to mitigate uh, some of the, the uh, things that had happened over there on the property lines of the abundance. Okay, well, look, again, we're asking for your support, we're asking for your neighbor's support, your family support, your friend's support, but we do think this is the right time to, to make this decision and the right time to move forward. Thank you, we will have the, uh, the additional informational meeting, and at that point in time, we'll be able to give you the hot number, the real number. Uh, it will be between 13 and 16 million, and then hopefully we'll see you all at town meeting. Thank you very much.